Well, McLaren Vale, of course, is where Dad, having uh, done medicine for four years, uh, he, uh, he dropped out of that and, and, uh, and started here on the vineyard. And it was 1927 before he built the wine in 1928 was the first vintage. So he was a grape grower for many years. Of course, uh, our great-grandfather was a director of Hardy's uh, treasurer, actually, so he worked in the Vale quite a bit anyway, and, and that's when he saw the vineyard come up for sale and went and bought it, and, and obviously uh, it was the next generation, though, my grandfather, who really developed it. I always wanted to work in the family business, really, um, but I think the point that really made it to me was when I sat on Len Evans' knee when I was about seven years old, he used to come and stay, and he said to me, what sort of wine are you going to make? And I said, a yummy one. And, uh, of course, he didn't ask me the question, am I going to be a winemaker? And I didn't answer it as if, well, you're presuming I'm going to make wine. But actually, it's, uh, it was installed in me. The sea is obviously very crucial to McLaren Vale's climate, and the closer you are to the sea, the more maritime and the more the lower the diurnal variation. I think it's actually important to really understand what the family does bring to a winery if it's four generations like Darenberg, then we, we basically have a continuum of technique in a way. We still use all the same old open fermenters, we just copied them and turned them into stainless steel little five tonne fermenters and we still basket press. Okay, Darenberg actually basket presses everything that we make, whites, reds, everything that we do. We've got 10 of them. But these two behind me are the oldest two that we have. This is a 160-year-old French cock press and a 60-year-old Australian Bromley Tregoning press. And uh, the reason that I love basket pressing is that we keep everything in little small batches. They're all five-tonne little fermenters and we can keep the parcels separate the whole time. It goes into wood to finish ferment. It's also a very gentle press and we work extremely hard on the whole gentle thing. And also the, it's such a wad of skins like this that the juice actually filters as it comes through the skins and comes out very low solids. So we can leave it in the barrel on the solids for the whole time without even racking. And it, it, then it creates like a reductive environment with the oxidative environment of the barrel so that we get this balanced effect and the wine's fresher, oak's more integrated and uh, more lively wine. And it takes a long time to understand the vineyard and really make, the, really get the best out of that vineyard. And so we returned all of the vineyards back to the old way. No cultivation, no spraying, no irrigation if we can, and no fertiliser now for 12 years. And we're really seeing the soil flavour now getting into the grapes because we've removed the fertiliser in the water. We're not growing them hydroponically. So the vine has to really work to get all that soil flavour. So you get a great minerality that way. And being gentle in the processing also ensures that we we keep the minerality and don't overblow it with two excessive tannins. Well, I think uh, there's, there's, there's a great synergy between, between uh, growing up with it and being with it and, and having it all the time and, and looking after it. And we're very proud of the wines we make. I'm incredibly proud of what Chester's done because uh, after he came home, we modernised the winery, had all the latest technology, all the 101 things you can do. And of course, there's always improvements going in in the research and wine industry. And when you apply those to the old fashioned techniques that we still use, then you can produce some lovely wines and they're very unique wines, they're different wines. And that's the family uh, part of it. So many of the companies have sold out of the families and the wine brands are just disintegrating because as the, as the big marketers get behind it, very often they're not, uh, not wine making companies that buy them. They're just merchandising companies, breweries very often, and they, don't, they try and merchandise wine like they do beer and that's not the same thing at all.